on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Good evening, Nashville, Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, those of you as far west as Jackson, those of you as far east as McMinnville. Welcome to Pharmacist on Call with your host, Dr. Sean Pruitt. And if you're watching this show, guess what? I am your community pharmacist. Everyone, welcome to your monthly community service, your monthly one hour forum. This show is about you. This is where you get the opportunity to ask me questions regarding your medication or any other health concern because your doctors and your pharmacists, is a bit, pharmacists are busy. But guess what? They don't have time, I do. So call in with your questions and your comments. Rule number one, there are no silly questions. So no matter how think how uh, silly and mundane you think a question is, chances are it's gonna bless someone else and it's been the case uh, for you know the last six years or so that we've been doing it. Speaking of that, this is season six, episode one. So thanks to your support, of the pharmacy, pharmacies and the show, we are here season six, episode one. So thank you for your participation. Uh, wanna jump right into our, uh, our condolences, birthdays and what have you. And I think we got a little short list today. So uh, today we want to uh, wish my big sister Kim uh, happy birthday. She'll be turning something on uh, May 24th. Uh, nurse over there at the oncology department at Meharry Medical College. Uh, so big sis, uh, happy birthday to you coming up. Uh, and I cannot believe that I missed this. I did two shows in April and I can't forget it. I can't believe I forgot it. So April 5th, um, I turned 30 years old in the Omega Psi Phi fraternity. I can't believe I forgot that. 30 years as a Q from APSU. So uh, me, I'm the one dog, my dudes Clifford Aaron Greer, my three Stephen Jeffrey Tyson out in Carolina, four dog Richard Nealon Ray out in uh, Texas, five dog Garvin Erskine Johnson in Memphis, and my tail dog, my six dog Capone, Sidney Brian Mitchell out there in uh, Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, so big shout out and happy uh, 30th to you guys. Also happy 30th to the other Qs that have gone through through spring 89. And I'll tell you what, the Kappa Row AKAs and the other uh, Deltas from Austin P as well so all of us who went through together you know what happy 30th to you guys as well uh, this is your one hour forum for those of you who this is you're viewing for the first time you're wondering what this guy's on TV talking about this is where you get to call in and ask me any kind of question regarding health care finances religion politics no, I'm kidding. We're going to keep it healthcare focused only. Uh, so this is our community service to you. Uh, so if we don't have any questions, uh, I'm going to get into, well, looks like we got our first one's going to get into some supplements, but we'll get back to that in a second. So it looks like we've got John on one. Welcome to Farm System Call. How may we help you? Yes, sir. Uh, I take uh, beetroot juice and CBD oil. And uh, my blood pressure has got down to a normal level now, but my heart rate is fluctuating between 40 and 48 beats per minute. Is that pretty abnormal for heart rate? Okay, are you on um, are you on uh, anything for like arrhythmias? No, I, no, not that I know of. I've uh, recently quit taking my blood pressure medicine because my blood pressure is down to normal now. Okay, now did your doctor okay that? Uh, not, not officially. No, we bought a uh, blood pressure kit from yeah. uh, one of the local stores, and yes, sir. it was running real close to what it was when I was going to the to the clinic. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I got seeing that heart rate, it kind of worried me. I did cut back on the blood pressure medication. Uh, I think that that may be tied to it. So let's let's get back on our blood pressure medication because what I always want you guys to do is to let your doctor make the decision to take you off of the medication. I want them to see that what you're doing is working so well that they have no choice but to take you off the medication. You follow me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, Go ahead. I'm I'm just I'm to see him here in a couple of days, but would uh, between 40 and 48 beats per minute is that kind of alarming to be that low? Uh, More I don't I don't know how active you are, so you know now ha you say, but you haven't been taking the medication though. Uh, I haven't been taking it for a couple of days now, but when I'm real active outside, it does seem to go up a little bit, the heart rate. Yeah, yeah, and I think you're going to get fluctuations depending on, you know, what you're doing. You're taking it, you know, first thing in the morning, you're sitting down. It's probably going to be a little low because you haven't been active. Uh, but as long as it responds to exercise, then we're okay. 
Uh, but again, okay. I want you to, you know, let your doctor make the call on on the uh, on the medication there, and just tell them, hey man, I've uh, been doing some other things, and my blood pressure's down to normal. In fact, you can check it while I'm here in the office, and I'm wondering, can I either cut my dose in half or just come off of this altogether? Right. I'm going to go by the clinic next day or two and ha have them to check it and maybe get a recommendation then. But I, the pulse rate was what I was mostly concerned with being so low. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a little low. But then again, you you know, you're not in a moving exercise phase. So okay, me and well, I, I, I'm 66 years old, so I'm not no spring chicken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think maybe some of your blood pressure medication is still in your system, too. I mean, if you've only okay. just been off it for two days, so that combined with the CBD, which lowers blood pressure, with the uh, beetroot juice that also lowers blood pressure, you know, then it may be an additive effect lowering your pulse rate. Now, how long had you been on the beetroot juice for your blood pressure? I've been taking beetroot juice now for, for about a year, I suppose. Okay. And CBD all about the same, same time. Okay. Well, good deal, man. I'm glad you responded the way you are then. And it's been steadily going down. I go to the doctor every, every 90 days, and it's always down every time a little bit. Then I think you have a, a good case then for uh, probably coming off the medication or at least all reducing right, the dose. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, thank sir. You. All right, thank you. All right, good stuff. All right. Anel, welcome to Farm System Call. I mean, we help you. Okay, I have a question. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Great. I um, am visiting in the Nashville area, and I'm visiting a, a family member, and they were sharing with me that their doctor ordered a Doppler study because the person has some swelling, um, and uh, mainly in their legs. And it's been going on for a couple couple weeks now, probably about two months now. Mm -hmm. And they went to the doctor. And the doctor ordered a Doppler study after some other things. Doctors thought it was cellulitis. Now it's gotten, you know, it's progressed and gotten worse. So the antibiotic for the cellulitis is done, but yet there's still a lot of swelling there and even some more there in the calf. My family member told me they went to go get the Doppler study, but because they did not have uh, the $200 to pay for the test, that they were denied the test and told to, you know, come back when they have the money. Now, actually, I'm from New York State, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I'm finding this kind of hard to believe that someone can come in for an order test and not have the money right on them then and there and not ask to just be billed and go on and have the study done. I mean, the study could be life changing not getting the study done could be life threatening. Yeah, I agree and uh, especially it sounds like your uh, your family member is is insured. Uh, they may want to check with the insurance company to see if they can be de be denied care because they don't have, you know, their copay and see what the um, the legal logistics are regarding that. But I would agree with you, uh, a test that is important is this to determine, you know, potentially a very serious situation. Uh, I think yeah. you could have built this, you know, over the course of maybe 90 days. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty bad situation, whoever did that. Okay, so in this particular area um, of of the U.S., because like I said, I'm from New York. Mm -hmm. In New York, I mean, I'm I'm a nurse, so I'm I'm just used to somebody coming in and saying, "Okay, we can't pay. All right, we'll bill you. You know, sign this, basically saying that you'll have the bill paid by a certain amount of time, whatever, whatever." But the test is done anyway. So how can you be turned away from health care if you really need it? I'm going to assume that maybe that was front office staff who didn't fully understand and uh -huh. I'm giving the physician or the provider the benefit of the doubt that they did not turn the patient away, but I think it was front office staff who may not have understood the, the gravity of the yeah. situation in terms of health care. And they're looking at it strictly from a business you pay standpoint so I can see where that can happen but I hope that they did not do that at the behest of the provider but yes it does it it can happen wow. okay well mm -hmm. thank you for listening I appreciate it yes ma'am welcome to Nashville 
Thank you very much. All right. Bye -bye. <laughs> All right. Kelly, welcome to Farm System Call. May we help you? Hello? Oh, hi. Uh, my name's Kelly. I'm in Macomb County, and uh, I'm addicted to pain medicine at the moment. And, you know, the doctor cut, cut us off, and people up here forget it off the street. And, uh, you know, I'm really interested in maybe the CDC oil of trying to get off it, you know, give the daylight something. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like CBD oil for um, for opiate withdrawal uh, because you go through a, a series of different things. You'll have the flu-like symptoms, you'll have the depression, you'll have the nausea, uh, up to vomiting, the, the body aches, but you still have the pain to deal with too. And so that's where the uh, the hemp oil comes in. It pushes up your serotonin, pushes down your dopamine. Uh, it also has something to help with the nausea, something to help with that, that flu-like symptoms that you go through. But it also helps to deal with the pain, which is the reason that you're taking the opiate and medication to begin with. And not to mention, it's legal. You're not gonna run the risk of losing your freedom. And it's relatively inexpensive. This little guy here, 19.99, and if you're, doing maybe half a dropper full. This will last you a few weeks here. Uh, so yes, uh, Macon County, I'm not sure how far you are from me, but I would recommend you give it a try. Yeah, but how long would I expect your results? Okay, <laughs> well, I'll just tell you, uh, the, okay. people that, the people that we let sample, they feel it, you know, within before five minutes, some people almost instantly within a few seconds, but certainly less than a minute. So you'll start to feel better, especially if you're really, really bad off, you'll feel it lighten up pretty quickly because you're going to put it up under your tongue. And so it's going to go through that thin membrane under your tongue right into the bloodstream. Yeah, another thing I want people to understand is people, a lot of people have a hook on them up here. And we're not, people aren't trying to get high. They're trying to just not to be sick. Not addicts. Absolutely, and so for those of you who did not understand what he said, he said a lot of people who are on these medications and, and uh, they are, they're dependent, it's not that they want to get high or some even for the pain relief, it's that opiates because of the way that they are made, they do a number on your body and if your body doesn't get it, it does become physiologically sick. And so to get rid of that sickness, you do have to take more pain medication. It's almost like hunger. You don't eat food, you're going to get hungry. So this thing is the same thing. And as I've said before in the past, I don't care if you're the Pope. If you take this for a long enough time, you're going to become chemically dependent on opiates. And so try not to be so judgmental. It's, uh, you know, anybody can... You know, anybody can fall to it. Uh, but yeah, but CBD, it looks like we've got our win for it. So uh, I would recommend that to help you out. Daylight, a little bit of daylight to hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I, I prefer this even over medical just because of the high CBD content, low THC content. I, I think you're gonna fare, fare better off than this than marijuana. So I think for the people who are looking for health problem issues, we've already got our win. You know, I know there's some people who want medical for really intractable seizures and things of that nature, and that's fine. But for the vast majority of you who have issues that can't be resolved with prescription medicines, you've got your win with hemp oil right now with CBD. There's a lot of people that are really bad off uh, sir, this is Tennessee, and I'm sure we're one of the top three states. Yeah, it, yeah, a lot of people are really bad off. I know it's hitting rural America uh, even harder. Uh, and, and from what I understand, there were some doctors who were closed, uh, you know, dealing with some of these medications. And so that's going to create a problem on the streets. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's our solution. That, that's our contribution to the problem. So we're trying to uh, get the message out about CBD, about full spectrum hemp, and about what it can do for opiate withdrawal. No, nah, man, great call. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone, stay right there. We're going to be up on our first break. Come in with those questions.